This is the story of California's greatest industry and its forgotten men. He doesn't work in oil or steel or construction, nor in aircraft or shipbuilding or longshoring. He works in agriculture, a $3 billion industry in great fertile valleys stretching almost from the Mexican border to the Cascade Mountains. Don't get the wrong idea. He isn't a farmer tilling the soil with his own hands. The unmechanized family farmer is as outdated as the one-horse shea in these days of commercial agriculture. No, the man driving that tractor is an agricultural laborer. He's the man who does most of the work on modern farms. There are more than 400,000 of these workers in California's fields and orchards. They don't work on the little farms that Jefferson dreamed and wrote about as the backbone of our democracy. They work on great mechanized factories in the fields. They operate complicated machinery, just like any assembly line. But their wages are a third or half as much as those of factory workers. They are denied the protection of the minimum wage and hour law. They are denied the right to collective bargaining. They have no unemployment insurance. They have poor housing, poor food, poor sanitary conditions. They are the low men on the economic totem pole. They are the very old and the very young men and boys, women and even children, white and black and brown. Their employers claim to be horny-handed sons of toil, family farmers. But many of these self-styled working farmers own thousands of fertile acres. Some own tens of thousands of acres and know a lot more about driving a Cadillac than a tractor. Some are giant corporations, banks, oil companies, land companies, hiding behind a smokescreen of propaganda to deny farm laborers their most elementary rights. Let's look behind that smokescreen. Tens of thousands of these workers are brought across the border from Mexico every year. They are given a quickie physical examination at El Centro, then sent to work on big farms in the Imperial Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, the Salinas Valley, the Santa Clara Valley. They work mostly for big farmers who call themselves growers, although they personally grow and harvest only profits. Before World War II, most of the workers in California's fields were domestic agricultural laborers, following the crops every year. During the war, a farm labor shortage developed. Mexican workers were brought in to meet the emergency. Then the war ended. The emergency was over. But the employers knew a good thing when they saw one. They decided to keep on importing braceros from Mexico under agreements between the U.S. and Mexican governments. Now they prefer Mexican nationals to domestic labor, not because of some sentimental attachment for Mexican food or Mexican culture or Mexican music, nor because of any real shortage of domestic American labor. It is because a big supply of imported Mexican labor forces down the real wages of American farm workers. It is because an endless supply of destitute contract labor means more profits for the owners of California's rich soil and guarantees them against organization of these workers into unions. Teamsters in California make about $3 an hour. Carpenters make about $3.25. The common labor rate is about $2.80. These workers need every cent they earn to meet the ever-rising cost of living. But what do you think agricultural workers make? 70 to 85 cents an hour on the average for field labor. About one dollar to a dollar and a quarter an hour for machine labor. Often it is much less. These are the going rates for farm workers. Each year the number of contract workers or braceros brought in from Mexico increases until it now reaches more than 150,000 a year in California. They live in barracks, housing as many as 2,000 men. Any bracero who complains about wages or conditions can be sent back to Mexico on the next bus. And he sometimes is. The bracero is supposed to get the prevailing wage paid domestic labor. But this isn't the way it works. The wealthy landowners set the prevailing wage on a take-it-or-leave-it basis through their powerful associations. Then they demand and get approval to contract for as many braceros as they want. They order more than they need. 
enough to force real wages down, enough so that they don't have to hire domestic workers except on their own terms. No wonder the owners of California's farm factories like this system. No wonder they squawk whenever it's proposed to limit the importation of braceros, or whenever it's proposed to organize farm workers into unions, or to improve the conditions of these workers by protective legislation. These Mexican workers picking tomatoes are paid less than was paid 10 years ago. They are paid about a third of what industrial workers get for their labor. Their wage is determined not by a traditional small farmer employing an occasional hired man. It is paid by a Bank of America farmer, by big business enterprises that control most of the tomato production and market their product under the name of Del Monte, Van Camp, Campbell, Hunter Hines. That wage is paid for hard work, for back-breaking work in the hot sun. It is paid by employers owning huge farms, hiring hundreds or thousands of workers during the season, and quite able to pay the same wage other industries pay for their labor.